Hello to everyone and this is Enrican KU. In this part 1 we will discuss about confined space entry, hazards, testing, equipment, testing, limits and questions and answers from OSHA slash NFPA guidelines. What is the definition of confined space as per OSHA? Who is considered a confined space competent person? What are the different types of confined spaces? What is a confined space ticket and why is it necessary? Confined spaces come in many different forms, from tanks and vessels to crawl spaces and attics. It is important to recognize that not all confined spaces are designed for continuous occupancy. Silos, storage bins, hoppers, vaults, and pits are all examples of confined spaces that require careful evaluation for potential hazards. Identifying and evaluating the specific type of confined space is essential to creating an effective safety plan for entry and work. A competent person is crucial for identifying and mitigating hazards in confined spaces. OSHA defines a competent person as someone with the knowledge, training, and authority to take corrective measures. Only authorized personnel should enter confined spaces under the guidance of a competent person. A confined space competent person must have the necessary knowledge, training, and experience to identify hazards. Training should cover topics such as identifying hazards, testing air quality, and completing a risk assessment. Experience in performing confined space entries and identifying hazards is also important. A confined space competent person is responsible for ensuring the safety of authorized entrants during entry into confined spaces. They must identify and evaluate potential hazards, and take corrective measures to eliminate them. The competent person must also ensure that proper procedures are followed and documented in a confined space entry permit. The qualifications for a confined space competent person vary depending on the specific hazards and conditions of the space. However, OSHA requires that the competent person has the necessary knowledge, training, and experience to identify and evaluate hazards. The employer is responsible for determining who is qualified to be a confined space competent person and ensuring that they meet the necessary requirements. There are many types of confined spaces, including tanks, vessels, silos, storage bins, hoppers, vaults, and pits. Confined spaces may also be found in crawl spaces, attics, basements, and other areas that are not designed for continuous occupancy. A confined space entry permit also known as a confined space ticket, is a written document that specifies the precautions and procedures that must be taken before and during entry into a confined space. The permit must be signed by the confined space competent person and authorized entrance before entry is allowed. It helps ensure that proper safety measures are taken and that only authorized personnel enter the confined space. In part 2, we will be addressing the below questions related to confined such and shall provide the answers from OSHA slash NFPA guidelines. What are the common confined space hazards and how can they be controlled? What are the specific confined space hazards that need to be considered for entry? What are some best practices for confined space entry and work? In part 3, we will be addressing the below questions related to confined such and shall provide the answers from OSHA slash NFPA guidelines. What is the importance of testing confined spaces before entry? What are the oxygen level requirements for confined spaces? What are the gas limits for confined spaces in Singapore and Australia? What are the temperature limits for confined spaces? What are the CO2 limits for confined spaces? What are the explosive limits for confined spaces? I hope you enjoyed the video. You can ask more questions related to OHS field or suggest topics for next videos. One request to all kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel The Inner Can for more exciting videos.